I feel like you've kind of answered this question already just by telling us some yeah. of the anecdotes and, and stories, but your MBE, so how did that come about? Oh, this was nuts. It was hilarious when it happened because, so Sundays in the house, we have blankets, cushions, snacks, TV. We always watch films and stuff as a family together Sundays. So I said to the kids, get all your pillows and quilts and everything, get them downstairs and we create like a den. It's like a huge cushion den. So we all just jump in, huddle in and watch TV. My wife, she'd go downstairs, makes a cups of tea. She opens the letters on a Saturday morning. Um, no, that was Sunday. Sorry, that was a Sunday morning. And so she's gone downstairs, opened the letter and she started screaming. So I'm really excited right now. I'm thinking, yes, because I played the postcode lottery. <laughs> <laughs> so I presume for my wife to be that excited, 30 grand. it's something big. I'm thinking it's a 30 grand, 90 grand, 200 grand. And I play free tickets. So I'm like, Whoa, yo, big, do you know what I mean? So I'm winning here right now. So I'm so excited. She comes upstairs, babe, babe, you need, to, you need to sit down. I'm thinking, okay, that's a lot of money. It's 90 grand. I need to sit down. So I'm sitting down, do you know what I mean? Really excited, thinking I'm getting paid. She reads this letter and it starts from uh, the uh, Her Royal Majesty, the Queen. I'm like, what does the Queen got? To, maybe she gives them money. As long as she gives me <laughs> some, I'm happy, do you know what I mean? I thought she maybe give him some it's money towards it or whatever. Or yeah. yeah. So then I'm presuming as long as she gives me some money, I'm happy. Oh, I'm good. So I'm sat there. She's reading this letter. And there were so many words I didn't understand. Just totally flew past my head. I didn't understand what they meant. And she finished reading the letter. And I was like, so we didn't win? She goes, win what? You know, this is the postcode lottery thing. She said, no, babes, you're missing the point. I'm like, what is the point? We didn't win. She goes, No. And then she read the letter again, trying to explain it to me. I still didn't get it, what, what it meant. So now I went on YouTube, I went on Google, and then it hit me. Then it was like, boom, wow. I left the country where I was hated and despised, never would have achieved anything because people wouldn't let me. Yet now I'm in a country where people appreciate and say thank you for the work that I did. Blew my mind. Just my mind was like, Poof. and the royal family. Do you know what I mean? That is so huge. Came here with nothing, just a hope and a dream. So what did they say? What was it What was it for? Like specifically, was it for your work with... That was for my work with the community, for my work with the young people for all these years. So how did they get wind of that then? Mm. So what... there was, I think, 15 people that wrote a letter. Oh, really? 15 people that wrote a letter. One of the... I know one of the people who did write a letter and it was the um, director for the Racial Equality Council. Uh, Sue. Sue was like my second mum. So when I had the opportunity to do my um, youth work training, I did it with the Plymouth City Council, but I needed a placement. And I thought there's no better placement for me to work with than work with the Racial Equality Council. I always wanted to understand the the, the Equality Act, the rights of the people. Mm -hmm. So I knew that I can help them. I knew I could challenge the police when they're doing things wrong. I knew when people said things and did things that wasn't right, I would know how to challenge them in the right manner. Because before I was young and I always kind of got angry and frustrated and I could never express the pain or the the thing that was wrong. I could, couldn't just put it into words. It's known the law, isn't it? Like you said. Like, and I, and I felt if I went there, I could learn this stuff. Yeah, legally. Yeah. So I did. Um, and I spent um, 12 months working with them and I've learned so many incredible things from these people. So I know she wrote a letter. And I think she started the ball rolling with other people. So then you had the chief of the police, you had the head teacher from the arts college, you had the Plymouth City Council, you had, so it was quite a few really big yeah. people in the city that took the time. And that was, that was the biggest thing that hit me. So many people took the time to write a letter. I know how busy people are. And to ask someone to, you know what, take a day off and write a letter about me. It takes time. You got to think about what you're going to write, what you're going to say, then to write it, more, send it off. I think it's even more important because other people have done that off their own back. It's not yes. you instigating any of that sort of stuff. People are recognizing your work that you're doing within the community. And then, you know, they're speaking to other people and, and creating that to then write 15 plus letters from you know I mean? high it was, people. Is, it is was amazing. Incredible. So for me, it just blew my mind. So then we knew we've got this MBE and you're not allowed to tell no one. Really? Yeah. You're not allowed to tell no one for three months. Three months? Today release. That's tough. Yeah, today release it on the BBC and the, um, can do it. <laughs> and, and the list of honours for that year. So now I'm turning up to places. Street Factory is really tough at the minute. 
work is a bit dry enough, so I'm like chasing my tail, paying bills, doing this, doing that, working like everywhere I can. And people go, oh, don't worry, Tobes, you're going to do it, man. You're going to get through. I'm thinking, you don't bloody know I'm going to do it. <laughs> yes, I am going to do it because this MBE thing is happening in three months. But then you got to wait for three months. That was the hardest part. Then we went up to the palace and um, had this really, really cool suit. Uh, the Nike pair trainers. I always wear Nikes. Uh, used to wear Adidas, but what happened with Adidas, the, the the quality wasn't there no more. They changed. They used to, before the whole sole of them were grid. Right. I mean, they, they were solid, so they were filled. The whole bottom was filled. The new Adidas, if you pull up the bottom of them, they got a grid, a checked grid going right through it. it means they save in the materials. And for me as a dancer, I can feel that. So if I jump or I land or do anything, I can feel the impact. I did sort your shit out. Yes, step up because you let me down. <laughs> so then I went to Nike. And Nike are a lot heavier Air Force ones, but they're solid. So I can take that impact. I, it gives me enough support for my feet to do everything I need to do. So now I only wear these bad boys. Nice. And, I've got, and I've got 35 of them. <laughs> so I love trainers. Um, do you spend big on them now? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I do love Flat trainers. Yeah. Trainers is like one of my things. It's got a huge that though, isn't it? Oh, massive. Have you seen how big that's got? Like, yeah. Ridiculous. Massive. Ridiculous. So I love trainers and, and I love like a, my wardrobe is very colourful. So if you look at my wardrobe, it's like all oh, just different shades and colours of everything. I'm very colourful. Um, so then we, as we're before walking in, my wife goes, if they don't let us in because you're trainers, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> so imagine it's the right side of the palace and they go nah sorry no trainers yeah. do you know what I mean I'm like, like oh. trainers in a nightclub sometimes <laughs> do you know what I mean the palace like, <laughs> do you know what I mean I, I think she was every right to me yeah, yeah do you know what I mean so like, she yeah. was really worried about it and yeah. I was like babes are going to be good but the beautiful thing was once we were allowed to announce to people that I was going the community of Plymouth and I, and I loved it I just love it so many older people in Plymouth were like get on Toby boy you do it <laughs> but don't you bloody change I was like no I won't she said like, yeah I know you won't and make sure you wear a bloody bandana there as well. So all the old people are just always bloody and always just telling me off, do you know what I mean? But they did it with the love, do you know what I mean? And the care, it was so incredible. And I had so much love from the people for going up. And when I went up, I had my bandana on, I had my pair of trainers on, I had a bandana in my pocket, too much my whole style and everything. It was just incredible. And we walked in there and it was like a different world. Just, it's a different world. So then was this guy, um, this one of the guards who stood there like this, do you know what I mean? Didn't blink, didn't move. So I thought, oh, my other brother laughed. So I stood next to him and went, <laughs> didn't blink, nothing. I was like, yo, that guy is going to kill me in a minute. So I moved. Then we had to walk up. Prince William um, gave me the, the, the medal on a day. Um, so there was a certain way you had to walk up and everything. You had to take a little bow. And what was really cool was Prince William kind of was start talking and he lent the phone. He went, is that your real hair? And he sort of pointed at my hair, like, because my hair was just there. And, and he went, oh, is that your real hair? And he was about to touch it. And I knew he clocked himself going, oh, I can't touch it. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> not allowed to, not allowed no contact. Um, and like they told me, you know, only if they reach out, only then you're allowed to shake the hand. Um, otherwise, don't. Um, so there are very strict rules about how yeah. you should behave there. Um, so anyway, and uh, the coolest thing was, was just a bit funny because he went, oh, is that your real hair and everything? And I thought, yeah, yeah, cool. And I looked up at his and you didn't have much. I was like, oh, okay, that's why he asked. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> Which was really cool. A bit, bit of fun. Do you know what I mean? A bit of fun. Um, but the coolest thing I'll say, I got so much respect for that man because it, I presumed I was a high and a buy. You only got you know, a little time yeah. by the time you walk in on other people. And I went, yo, listen, while well, I got you here, and I'm always very cheeky. I said, yo, listen, while well, I got you here, I'm opening the street factory, I'm doing this, working with the kids. You went, Toby, I know everything that you're doing. I know you're based in Plymouth. I know this is your address. I know how many people you work with, and I know what you... He just knew everything. I was like, so you're coming down, yeah? He's like, okay, send us an invite. We'll definitely look at it. I was like, yo, thank you very much. Big respect. <laughs> Gave me the medal, and I made my way home. So then what happened was all the kids I talked before, who now live in London, say, Toby, let's catch up. And I am a bit of a party animal. I love to party, love to have a good time. So I said to them, yeah, after, let's meet me. And I was quite very excited at the beginning in the morning, really excited, really hyped. So I said, yeah, meet me, we'll go out, get some food, have a little drink, have a little party. I turned up to the place and this was me. <laughs> Why? I just couldn't believe it. It, it was, it just blew something. my mind. If you can understand the horror, and the struggle and the pain and the suffering and everything I went through in my life. And now I get awarded by a royal family. And then I get to sit in this pub that we met together and just reflect 
on the entire struggle and the journey and it's unbelievable. It doesn't happen to people like that.